Hi, my name is Ashley Davis. I'm the creator of DataForge, DataForge Notebook, and the author of the book Data Wrangling with JavaScript. This is a demonstration of DataForge Notebook. If you want to sign up to the early access for this software, please head over to dataforgenotebook.com and register your interest there. For this example, I'm going to demonstrate how to retrieve and chart the stock price for Microsoft uh, using the Alpha Vantage REST API. I'm also going to compute a moving average of the stock price, and we might use that to help us decide um, whether or not Microsoft is an attractive company to buy at the moment. So let's get into it. The first thing I need to access the, the REST API is a URL. So here you can see I'm accessing the Alpha Vantage uh, REST API. I'm using Microsoft as the ticker. I'm, I'm telling it to get me the daily uh, price data for Microsoft, and I'm getting back a CSV data. I'm going to use the NPM library request promise to request the data and retrieve it. Dataforge Notebook automatically uh, installs NPM modules that you use. So here I'm uh, requesting uh, the data back and I'm waiting for the response. I'm working very quickly, but let's just have a look at uh, the, the output we're going to get here. So I'm displaying the response. Uh, I'm just going to run the code. You can see I get a wad of CSV text data back. There's, this hasn't been parsed, so there's no structure. It's just text data. So the next thing I've got to do is I've got to parse it. I'm going to use DataForge to do that. DataForge is included with DataForge Notebook. I'm just going to run that code again just to check if that works. There's no output yet. I better, I better have a look at uh, what, that, what output that gives me. So I'm just going to display the first 10 rows in the data frame. <clears throat> I've used a bunch of different options there. I'm just going to brush over that for the moment. Um, so I've got my data. It's cached in DataForge Notebook now. I'm just going to output it to global variable data so that I can use it in the next cell. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to create the next cell. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to include the data that I computed in the previous cell. I'm going to extract the closing price from the data frame. I'm just going to quickly check that uh, this gives me what I want. Yep, so I've got a bit of uh, data extracted there from the data frame. And I just want to show you how easy it is to plot a chart. So I'm basically here, I'm calling the plot function and I'm passing that to the display function. And that just gives me a nice default chart of Microsoft closing price. Now I want to reuse this closing price. So I'm going to output that as a global variable. And then in the next cell, I'm going to compute my uh, simple moving average. So the first thing I need to do is I need to bring in the closing price from the previous cell. I'm going to use the SMA function from, from the DataForge indicators package that's included with DataForge Notebook. And I'm just going to have a bit of a, uh, a preview <clears throat> of the result there. So that lets me know that everything is kind of working as I expect. I'm going to also plot it just so to see what that looks like. And you can kind of see what the advantage here is of using a simple moving average. If we scroll back and look at the Microsoft stock price, it's all over the place. It's very volatile. You know, it can be difficult to understand uh, the trend and which way it's heading. But if you look at the uh, simple moving average here, that it's, it's much smoother and it's much easier to see that there's been an uptrend recently in Microsoft. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to output the simple moving average so I can use it in the next cell. Create a new cell. This is where I'm going to bring it all together now. I'm going to merge the simple moving average back into my original data uh, and I'm going to plot the result. I'm using the data forge with series function to merge the data. As I've been doing so far, I'm just going to plot a little bit of a preview of the data there. You can see that I've added the SMA column to my data. Now I'm going to plot it. So I'm I'm using uh, some parameters to the plot function this time. Uh, the second parameter there is what's important here, and that's basically saying I want to plot the closing price and the SMA on the chart. I'm just going to display my plot. And there you have it. Has it ever been so easy to uh, chart data in JavaScript before? You can use this to compare Microsoft's closing price to the average and interpret that, you know, 
take it how you will. You know, is Microsoft a good buyer? That's up to you. So how are you going to use this now? Scrolling back over everything I've done here. Quite a, there's quite a bit of work here and I want to reuse this. I've got various export options here. I can export to a single JavaScript file to get, the, get my code out. I can export a PDF, so that takes a snapshot basically. Uh, and you can use that, say, if you're doing a lecture and you want to do handouts, it's a great way to do handouts. You can export a web page. Uh, and it's a web page that's suitable for hosting under any web server. I like to uh, actually uh, put these in my blog using an iframe, so it's a great way to demonstrate um, code. You can also export a Node.js project, and that includes the web server for the visualization, and it also includes a REST API that serves the data. So either of these two options, exporting a web page or exporting a Node.js project, is a great way to bootstrap uh, your own visualization project. You can then export and extend on however you like. Thanks for listening. Uh, don't forget to head on over to dataforgenotebook.com and register for the Early Access Program. Thank you.